You have spoken, and today we're going to check out 5-inch presets. We're going to do a little shootout. So looking into the preset options that you have in Betaflight 4, Betaflight 4.4, um, there's only really four that come down for a 5-inch preset for freestyle, at least. We have the Karate Freestyle. Now this one here from Mouse, it's the Apex. It is kind of quad-specific, but since Apex is such a recognized kind of frame, I did kept that in the mix. We also have my 5-inch preset for GoPro. We have Superfly's 5-inch as well. And that kind of rounds them off. If you browse down through here and set it to Tuning 5 and just kind of look down through the rest, the rest are racing uh, presets for, you know, racing kind of frames, racing things, or just other, I don't, I don't know why some of these are still being captured in here, even though I put a five in there, even some of mine, I don't know, I don't know, but um, you can see there's a karate race, there's a, a Viper Light that's also a race, CTZ has one in here for uh, racing, so on and so forth, and the others are whoops in different quad classes. So these are the four we're going to do a little shootout with, we're going to break it down and see what the differences are between these. So when you click on any of these four presets, this is what you'd be presented with in Betaflight, so this is kind of the initial splash screen, shows you the options for each up top, a little description, you can see here I got a photo for mine, Superfly has some logo, um, another logo over here, and then the karate freestyle one is just kind of just text description more than more than not. Uh, they do have, you know, you want to read some of the description and some of the author's notes in there. But if we come down to here, we can kind of see the differences or start to see the differences between any of the presets, honestly. Most of the differences you're going to see in any of the presets, specifically in these five inch ones, are going to be in the PID profile settings tab and then also the filter settings tab here as well. So this is under PID settings in general on the main tabs on the left, and then there's these two sub tabs. And you can go in here, you're going to see that they all have different slider values. Some have some anti-gravity changes and some other little things. It's mostly going to be like anti-gravity, maybe some, uh, that's where it's going to be. It. It's going to be mostly anti-gravity, might have some dynamic idle stuff down here, uh, but it's most of the meat of it is going to be the slider changes. You'll see those change drastically. Same thing in the filters tab, you're going to see that you're going to see different slider values here for how much filtering would be applied in, in that specific preset. And then just di different, you know, are these low pass filters on here, you know, turned on, turned off, so on and so forth. So that's where you're going to see the different changes. In this screen here, you can see some of the options. So for example, with the freestyle five inch karate style, you can see the options there are either DigiSot 600, 300, there's an option for dynamic idle, and then applying the author's uh, rates. So this would be, again, in the rates profile tab here. So that's kind of a unique one. Um, that's kind of it. There's not uh, a lot, a ton of options, but again, those are it. Uh, if you would be choosing, you know, if you have a gyro that uh, runs 8K uh, for PID loop, then you'd probably want to choose your DSHOT 600. You could probably choose that either way, honestly. Um, it might be, some would say it might be a little wasted uh, running those extra cycles for 600 if you have, say, like a BMI gyro. But honestly, if you're not worried about all the little details of stuff, I'm sure DSHOT 600 is fine for a selection for any gyro that you use. And for this option here, the dynamic idle, if you don't know what that is, I'll make a card in the upper right, check that out. So moving on to the next one, this is the UAV Tech My uh, five inch freestyle with GoPro. And that's what we're gonna do our test on today. I had a GoPro mounted on the quad. So I'll show you that quad here in a little bit. So this is the one I'm using. I do have one with GoPro and without GoPro and then we, uh, general weight range you're looking for. Again, you can see here and we'll compare and contrast these different settings here in just a second, but your mainly slider changes do have an anti-gravity bumped up change there from default. And that's basically it. Um, big changes on the filter settings here, uh, whack that filter mount down. And this testing, I'm using the high build quality. So on my preset, you do have the same, the dynamic idle option. You can check that out. But then there's a low build quality, medium build quality and high build quality option. Again, I'll make a link into the upper right if you want a little bit more breakdown on what you should choose there but you have some basically filter options. Then you can add on and tack on the RPM filter to any one of these three. As you can see here, choose one plus RPM filter if desired. Uh, also, there's some tweaks and adjustments in this preset, depending on if you're running 16K or 48K for your ESC down PWM frequency. Again, I have in this preset down at the bottom, there's videos that you can link to if you don't know what these, what this settings mean. And uh, a little bit more on that, a couple minute video, five minute video. Again, I'll link that also in the upper right. Moving on to the Superfly preset here. Again, you can see some of the changes in the sliders here. Again, you're going to see some changes here in the filter settings. Uh, Anti-gravity is a little bit bumped up from the default. That's a 10 there. And then the rest of the settings are pretty much the same. With this, he does have options for 4S, 6S with HD camera or not. Same thing for 6S with the HD camera or not. And then you have the option for RPM filter or just dynamic notch. If you uncheck this, then you would just get the dynamic notch behavior. Similar to mine, I would recommend if you have those two options in a preset that you're using to check them out. Uh, check out with RPM filtering, check out without RPM filtering. You might be surprised at how the difference in flight that you'll see between those two. So a little Tip, check that out the difference. Check out running without the RPM filter for a little. And then he does have some stuff, some options down here for like RC links and things like that and other rates things. I didn't show those on here. Uh, you can see the scroller goes down. Um, those aren't really going to impact your tune. That's going to impact like your, maybe your flight feel kind of thing. It, it really has to do with what kind of smoothing you should have based on if you're using crossfire and dynamic mode and things like that. So since those are not really tuning parameters, they're kind of RC link options here and other things. Um, yeah, they're in there. Check that out. Some of these guys have thrown in some things outside of tuning into the tuning presets that you can choose for some options. And finally, mouse FPVs. You can see again, the changes here, changes here. Got default anti-gravity there. Is using some dynamic idle on by default. So that's in there. And then is using some thrust linear by default, 20%. Mouse's preset is a little unique as, well, first of all, it's, it's pretty high test. If you look at some of these D gains in here, like the default is 56. 66. That's pretty high. But there is an option here for less cheese, a little less cheddar on the little less spicy on that tune. I would definitely recommend using this probably first. So check that option first, see how she flies. And then if you want to, you know, 
use some more cheese <laughs> and uncheck that option, uh, go. Because this one is definitely spicy. Uh, there's a lot of cheese uh, on it by default. So yeah, check that out. And again, they got some options here for which uh, D shot uh, you're going to use there. I don't think you're going to notice the difference between any of these D shot values, but each their own. You can check those out. So in comparing those, some of the big PID parameter changes is this P to D balance. So you have a P term and a D term. And when we're talking about that, I'm talking about this term right here, the proportional, and then the derivative over here. And that balance between this gain number and this gain number has a pretty big impact on the flight performance of the quad. So comparing those and seeing how they contrast, kind of dividing those out, you can see here I have the roll PDD balance and the pitch PDD balance, and you can see how they stack up. So the Superfly 5-inch has a pretty heavy dose of P-term in relation to D-term. So generally what that means is the, the tune is going to be a tighter tracking tune. The farther you go this way with that PDD balance, it's going to be tighter tracking. You know, the quad is going to want to really stay on your sticks. That means with stick moves, and also when you're not moving the sticks and it's getting influenced by outside things like wind or just... Uh, just the different dynamics of the motion of the quad getting thrown around and the weight shifting of the battery because you know your center of balance is not perfectly where the center of gravity of the quad is so there's there's some of the components there as well now on the flip side of that the lower you go with this the more damped response you're going to get same thing for wind and things of that nature so you can see my with gopro one is kind of trailing that as the second has a healthy amount of d term or p term but not not as much it's you know the, the pdd balance is a little less uh you can see on his too which is unique that it has that pdd balance more on the roll than the pitch which is um which is unique. Uh, mine, I find it the other way for mine, and you can see uh, most of the others is, I guess it's not unique. I guess mine's unique. I have more of the damping on the pitch access than the roll access. Now, I have reasons for that. Mine is, uh, I find that when you're tuning things out, since there's an extra moment of inertia on the pitch access due to extra weight because of the GoPro camera and things, you need a little bit more damping to uh, make those uh, you know, uh, forward flips and backward flips nice and smooth and, and, and uh, good stops, no bounce back, things of that nature. But nevertheless, you can see those differentials. You can check out the difference between those two. Again, the Apex, uh, you can kind of see this is the default beta flight PDD balance. So uh, you can see where that is. And then the Karate Freestyle is actually a little bit below that, the, below the default. So it has more damping than the default in beta flight without loading any presets. Now that PDD balance in the ratio, when you apply different presets, you're going to see that's basically the difference between these two sliders. So if this slider is a little higher than this slider, that's going to be a little bit more damping. If this slider is a little bit higher than that slider, then this one, you know, it's going to see it's a little bit more tracking. So you can see the name nomenclature there lining up quite nicely. So that's kind of what you're looking for. And, and it's really the differential between these two, not so much where they are in space. So it doesn't matter if they're up here or down here, it's really the difference between which this value is compared to this value, or you could just look at these values right here on the left-hand side to see the difference. So that's, those are the kind of the sliders that when you apply the different presets and you see these adjust back and forth, that's going to make that difference between that damping and tracking effect that you're going to see in the tunes. Now, moving right along, the next one we're going to check out is PID strength, the master multiplier, which is going to be this slider way down here. And you can see when I move that slider up and down, all the gains go up or all the gains go down. So in comparing and contrasting this, we're gonna be looking at how strong are all the gains, how high are all the gains versus how low are all the gains. And specifically, we're gonna target into the D term because that's really the limiting factor for how high you can push all the gains is how high that D term is and the rest thing kind of folds in line. So uh, in this one, you can see the mouse apex one has the highest. And like I said, by default, pretty high, uh, 56, 66. I know when I first flew this and it was on the ground yet, she was a little fluttery uh, until I took off. Then it kind of settled down. I kind of was like, uh, I armed it and I was like, oh, I can hear a little flutter. And then I was like, well, I'm just gonna go for it. And I took off and then it was fine uh, after that point. So she's definitely high test. And then it has this unique option for the less spicy option or less cheese that uh, you might want to check out by default. And that reduces the gains down to more like a 48 or 58. Now, in my experience, uh, you know, you can see that's kind of what I have in my preset down here by default. And I don't have a, a higher, lower master multiplier option. Um, you can see though, then that brings it kind of in line. There's a point higher uh, a little bit on, you know, the, at least the roll and pitches at four points higher. But uh, yeah, this kind of brings that, those kind of two more in line. Then subsequently down the list, we have the Karate Freestyle, the Superfly 5-inch, and then the default. So you can see that all the presets for Freestyle are all pushing the default gains, the amount of gains up. And that's for a reason. And the default is conservative. It's meant to be conservative. It's meant to be safe. It's meant to be, you can flash it on any quad, not touch a thing, and it's going to be safe and not uh, fly up and hit you in the face. Um, that's kind of by design. But you can see that all the presets will get you better prop wash handling as your gains are higher here, that you're going to get better prop wash handling with these presets than you will with defaults. The response is going to be softer as these values are lower, um, which, you know, for sometimes for freestyle pilots will say, well, I want a nice response, soft response. It's like, yeah, but you don't want prop wash, do you? So I would say that they want soft response as in soft on the sticks when they're, they're getting stick inputs, which is a whole different barrage of settings. Uh, and I'll make another link in the upper right for that, that you would adjust RC smoothing and your rates for that if you want to be soft on the sticks. But you want your quad's response to outside conditions and prop wash to be sharp and fast uh, so you can keep as steady as possible against wind and things like that. So again, you want to push these kind of these gains up as much as possible and you can see kind of where everything lines up in these presets. Looking at how they compare in filter strength, what I'm comparing there is the amount of filter delay. I have a calculation tool. Again, I'll make a link in the upper right if you're more interested in that detail that can calculate out the amount of delay that your filter settings has in Betaflight. So you can plug in all the little parameters that you see on the screen there, the filter settings screen, and it'll tell you how much delay. And the it will also tell you how much the attenuation, but that varies depending on what hurts the data, you know, what hurts the vibrations are at. So to kind of equal 
equalize that, I just looked at the total delay. Generally, I've been doing this for years. The amount of delay is associated to the amount of filtering. Less delay means less filtering. More delay means more filtering. So that's the parameter we're looking at here. So you can see here is you have more delay, it's more tolerant to vibrations, better prop wash handling with less delay, but it's less tolerant to vibrations. In my preset, I do have those, um, I guess, somewhat unique options here for at least the freestyle ones where there's three different options. So you can see what we have by default for Betaflight 4.8 milliseconds of delay on the filtering. So that's basically the gyro signal comes in from the gyro, gets filtered and adds 4.8 milliseconds of delay. Roughly it varies uh, depending on some things, but uh, yeah, you can see that 4.8. So you can see my low build quality one has 5.4 milliseconds of delay, then the medium is 4.4, a little bit less than default. And then the high build quality is the competitive, the lowest amount of the 3.7. Now this is without using the RPM filtering uh, option. Uh, if you add the RPM filtering option, that will add a little bit to these. Uh, I make some other adjustments to kind of, uh, to kind of offset that. But nevertheless, you can see those different options. Superfly, you can see how that stacks up a little bit more filtering. There's not options. You just kind of get what you get. It's 4.9, a little bit higher than the default. And then karate, and you can see the other two down here as well. So the mouse one, again, is a, depends on what you're picking here, but uh, you can see that has a, a low amount of filtering or decently low amount of filtering and then those those pretty high gains so the mouse one in my experience is a like you have to have a it's, it's made to rip you have to have a good quad though too if you have a, a bunch of issues with your quad it's, it's probably not gonna work out as well for you so yeah just keep that in mind and loading that preset up hey, stop being such a buzz and then finally here and we'll get on to some footage is the stick tracking so we had the tracking versus damping and that's just all around but when you really implement sharp moves with your stick snap roll snap whatever, you need a little bit extra boost beyond that P-term. And that's where feed forward comes into play. And that is this one right here. And you can see as I move that slider back and forth that these feed forward terms over here change. So taking a look at that, there definitely is a big difference uh, from the UAV Tech with GoPro compared to the others. You can see the Superfly 5-inch uh, Karate Freestyle. You can see where the default is. They're a little bit higher than the default, but uh, you know, mouse uh, is a little bit lower than the default on that one. Now, this is definitely a feel thing. When you're not moving your sticks really fast, this doesn't really matter. It's going to just follow your rates and that P-term, the amount of P-term matters. But if you're really doing some snap moves, in my experience, you're going to need a lot of feed forward. Feed forward is not a very sensitive term. So going up from like 150 to 160, you're not even going to notice a difference. You got to go up by like 50 points at a time. And then you'll actually see and notice a difference. It also depends how fast your rates are. If you have low rates, then yeah, you probably don't need a lot of feed forward. But uh, if you have some high rates, I usually run like a thousand degrees per second on my roll and pitch. Yeah, you're going to need feed forward ranges. In my testing, in my experience of something up like that. Of course, you can apply these other presets and do that. Or, you know, maybe that's not what you like. But generally with more feed forward, you're going to get a more connected feel. The quad is going to stay on the sticks. And I have black box logging to prove that. And uh, lo uh, more of a laggy feel uh you know if you move the stick fast you don't have a lot of feed forward by the time the quad actually gets moving there'll be six to eight milliseconds of delay in there so yeah it all adds up obviously if you're you know one of those guys with a low latency control link you're gonna want to get the most out of that by checking out feed forward so anyways you can see the difference in the, the tunes there but from here let's check out some footage and see how these flow against each other so the quad i did the tests on or this one it's the amazing quad with the see-through prop see i can make it like go right through me isn't that like that's awesome so yeah for 999.95 you can get this quad with these translucent make holes in body props um, yeah, happy to give it to you. But now you can see for this quad, I had this all up weight and I uh, had a 4S pack on it right now. I have a 6X. I'm about to go out and do a little flying. And uh, yeah, you can see the GoPro setup, GoPro uh, Hero 5. So this has BL Heli 32 and it has the 2420 KV motors. They are the RC and Power Wasp motors. And um, yeah, I got the Mr. Steel props on it. This frame is a Source 1 frame. Pretty standard uh, quad, pretty standard build, I think, for a freestyle quad. So hopefully this is a good quad for use for comparison purposes. So in this next set, we're going to roll some flight footage, and I am going to get out of the way so you can see that and hear it. So the first, we will look at just smooth forward flight. We're going to have the audio on, look for the little ear for which audio you're hearing for, for this. It's going to be all of them um, at one time, and it's basically the same sound anyways to uh, tee the difference, but you're going to want to cue in and look at the horizon and the trees and, you know, see if they're just as smooth as each other. Um, so that's what, I, that's what I would cue in on and, and I'll let you make your own determination. After that, you're going to hear a full throttle punch. And in that one, we're trying to look at you, just hearing it too. You know, is there any fluttery weird sounds and you'll hear them all again. They all basically sound the same. Moreover, do you have any shakes? The, like, is, is it when you're doing a full throttle punch, is it like jittering and shaking around or just, you know, nice and smooth straight up? And then also you can kind of check out the, when I hop off the throttle, does the nose move down and bobble a lot between the different ones? And this is something, you know, with the four all at the same time, you might have to, you know, just back it up a little bit. Depends how interested you're in checking out all the little nuances between them, but that's what that one will be. From there, we're going to look at prop wash. And this one, we're going to do that twice. We're going to do one at full speed. We're going to cycle the ear around so you can hear the different prop wash on all the different tunes. And then we're going to slow it down and then offset this a little bit. So you actually hear the karate first, then the mouse, so on and so forth. So you can kind of hear it at different uh, ones based on the two different. We're going to slow down the footage on the second one because prop wash happens pretty quick to uh, actually see the prop. We're going to slow it down to 50% speed so you can, can really see it and really hear it. And finally, the last one is throbble. So throbbles is me pointing the quad in one direction, kind of getting it the horizontal right in the middle, and then just pumping the throttle and seeing if you see that nose bobble up and down. 
And again, you're going to hear the different audio and different ones and really keep your eye on that horizon to see how much bobble you see between the different tunes. They might wonder why we're looking at these specific things. It's because these really push the tune hard. Just flying around smoothly and doing big arcs and stuff like that, any tune's going to do pretty well. But at the end of the day, these are the hard dynamic conditions. And there's other ones, but these are the hard dynamic conditions. And how does the tune keep up with sharp stick moves, uh, things of that nature? I did do some flips and rolls. They all look pretty good to me, the flips and rolls uh, between them all. So I didn't show those in here, but enjoy these and let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you are interested in my feedback on them and a little bit deeper dive, look into what they show, because I have all these black box, uh, check out my Patreon. I'm going to put a link down below for a video is releasing right now where we dive in a little bit deeper, looking at the black box and see the difference between these. Uh, we'll look at the flips and rolls as well. And step response on that. So if you want to peel the onion just a little bit more, that's what my Patreon's all about. That's what the videos are all about that I produce to those guys as a thank you for, you know, supporting the channel. But uh, outside of that, check out these and uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks everybody. And I hope this helped.